Hi everybody, I'm Kinkas and I'm a synth DIY guy, reporting from Sao Paulo, Brazil. I'm here with my friend Arthur Jolie, the guy who introduced me to synth DIY by giving me my first U-Synth board about six years ago. We're here in his studio with his massive machines and he's going to tell us a little bit about them. Well, th this is one of the first, uh, well, the first one I've, I've done was this. This is a, a bullet case and inside here there is a music from outer space mini synth and I call the platoon, the, the, the case and the stuff. And then I began to, to buy the kits and make larger creations. This one, it's all almost all creations of uh, Ray Wilson. So there are four 16-step sequencers, uh, six oscillators, voltage quantizers, um, envelope, LFO, envelope, envelope, AR, some point holds two of them, uh, LFO, this is clock divider by U-Synth, uh, two, fut uh, four filters from Ray Wilson, this is the oscilloscope, uh, what's the name of this oscilloscope, I buy it on eBay. Ah, uh, the DS, DSO-128. Yes and Cinear, Attenuators, uh, 808, Bass Drum, Clap, these are from... Uh, Hex Inverter. Hex Inverter, yeah. uh, This is AR, Ring Modulator, VCA, VCA, Phase Shifter, Bass Drum from Hex Inverter, Stereo Auto Panner, Multifunction from Ray Wilson, Voltage controller echo from Ray Wilson. Spring reverb this is the stage center of reverb and, and so on. So uh, Wait, I, what's the keyboard? Is that uh, a keyboard is from is it, is it MIDI or is it uh, no it's MIDI to analog. CD. Ah, okay. But it's analog also. Yeah, this keyboard is from uh, dot com. Ah okay. Yes. This is one I made in Portuguese. So Kinkas helped me to translate for Portuguese terms that we don't usually have here. Like uh, envelope generator is gerador de envoltoria. Atacar, decair, manter, liberar. And uh, this was made for educational purpose. I, I was thinking to put those in schools for, uh, to teach how to patch synthesizers, but it's not the one right to do this here's a stylophone keyboard and so these ones are the new ones that i produce my own pcb so i studied a little bit how to make simple modules so i put them together and now, nowadays i have my own pcbs to fix them in in the own panel so i don't have to use many Wiring. Wiring, yes. So these are two. I, I was planning to do lots of them, but uh, I will not do this. I, I, I like to do each one as a project. So those, I stopped. There are the, the, I made four of these, I think, and four of these. And now I'm gonna do new ones. Not this. Very cool. Uh, this well, is. What about the, the that huge cabinet that's behind them? Right yeah, there? this one is my. Uh, I used to play and make my records using this synth. The problem is, it, it's very hard to reach everything. Reach everything. The back hurts, so I I was planning to do something large, like with lots of modules, like this one, but. In a smaller format. Easy, yeah, easier to produce music. So this one I will be here, and there there will be three rows of modules. So uh, it's about fifty or sixty something modules. Up here I will put a a wheel recorder, and this is how I will produce my next albums using modular. 
for me it will be more ergonomic yeah improve i will produce better and more more time produce so tell us about this behemoth down here this one it, it's called the anvil machine i made for a friend of mine called paulo beto who has a band called anvil effects and first it was just this piece here and later this this part here is all Ray Wilson's and music from outer space and here two years later I I discovered the Usynth website so I began to get the copper boards and melt and do the corrosion mm -hmm. and the through etching. holes yeah and this is all handmade using the Usynth board yeah and is, is this format a uh, five view format or is it a, a pro uh, it's, proprietary format? Yeah, it's a little bigger than... Joli U. Yeah, <laughs> because I, I like those big knobs here, so yeah. I, I built for them. Who doesn't like big knobs? Yeah, and this is a, a five case, but don't fit in a car, so that's the reason <laughs> it's not portable for <laughs> shows. What about this guy here? This is one of the towers of this synth called the Giant Lee. There are three towers and these are mixed of many DIY projects. Uh, projects. Yes. And uh, one of these is just drum machines and and clock dividers. So one of these I put one clock and divide for lots of um, percussion. Percussion. Yeah. I think all from X Invert. Okay. I, I think the I mutant bought, mutant drums. Yes, I think I bought all he had for drums, and there are three towers. Cool. This one is is the mini synth uh, mini synth two. What's the name of the Mark, the Sound Lab mini synth Mark yeah, two? Yeah, Mark two, and I put this dial dial to make a tremolo like. Just a cut. I, I think it's beautiful. That's why I put it. <laughs> it is beautiful. <laughs> In fact, all your stuff is very, very beautiful. It's, Thank uh, you, Pinka. Aesthetically as well as sonically. This is uh, Hecoverb. Hecoverb are the ones people ask me a lot to produce. They are spring reverbs. And this is uh a simple simple reverb with equalization this one is reverb with uh delay uh -huh. this delay is the tone pad uh what's that rebote rebote Re rebote yeah rebote delay and i i had to put an attenuator in an extra amplification because uh, the tap the, the reboot was for guitars and mm -hmm. this was for line so I, I needed to put something extra excellent and th these are some of them uh, lots of my stuff i produce to use record and a friend get it and uh, sometimes i change for other instruments sometimes i i get paid but this is not what i do for 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 living, for living. yeah that's that's my passion that's why I don't stop. And what do you do for a living? Well, I mastering music, and now I have a vinyl lathe, and I do mastering in, in vinyl. Can you show us the lathe? Yeah. Let's go. Here's where my DIY skills got into, into practice. Uh, yeah, because I got this lathe from 19. 56 it's a Neumann and this part here was was not working well but this part that was here was all broken so I need to, to do some trips to learn how to cut records mm -hmm. and learn what this was about and what this was broken or working so one of the things, this metal part here, where the air is pumped to pull the, the lacquer down, was all messed up. When I opened it, it was all full of cement. Somebody put a sack of cement here and, 
and it was all covered. And when I took this off to make the labyrinth, 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 uh, to make this labyrinth open, it was all like this, and the record was doing this, and all the stylus were broken. So I needed to make this flat with a machine here and a lot of sparkles flying around. <laughs> After that, I needed to produce my own stylus heating here. Uh, the microscope lamp was broken, so I needed to make a LED one. Um, and then I, I met a guy called Flo Kaufman, who is doing these heads here, that is our like Neumann heads. Very nice professional heads made made for a guy from today's. Uh, he is about 40 years old like me, and he make these things in Switzerland. And he built this part here that is called uh, the Peach 13. And this is my creation of design and the PCB are from him, my Floca Peach 13. And this is the the music get here one second before here so here it gets the signal and see how much this part needs to come to this yeah to move here so if the sound is very big need to go faster this motor behind and if there's just a little voice or just a drone doesn't need to right so so it optimizes the space of the record. So doing that, I can have more volume, mm -hmm. less noise ground in the, in the, and never cuts through the, the grooves. So this is a so very- So the grooves are varying widths according to the content. Yeah, yeah, it's, they are very, uh, you don't lose any space in the record. Okay. So you get more. So this is very uh, new because until the end of, vinyl uh, era or vinyl produce production production there was no such a machine because they don't didn't have so many resources right for technology technology so flow got it and the motor behind here it's a servo motor from robots and this is the last thing i, I needed to diy he, this motor was he told me to put direct in the lathe but when I hit the fast button in the in the final to make the lock groove, the vibration of this motor was going to the sound. So every record that I cut was like in the end. So I needed to make something to put this motor away. So me and my friend, we created a uh, support with uh, rolamentos, I don't know how rolamentos. Bearings. With bearings and a plastic, that splits the motor from the lathe so i nice. i get rid so of, you get isolation from yeah, the mechanical from vibration the, yes cool and, and here for you to see let me see if there is a, a record that shows maybe this here here is where i i see the grooves so you see here it's almost touching but it's not so that's that's the that's what you want yeah so i can have uh here it opened a little bit because it's and if you see the silence in the beginning it's closer together yes so that's the they use for this machine very cool and this is all your mastering equipment right yeah here i use uh, some chandlers if i want transistors and here mallets when i like when i use tubes mm. these are the scopes the scopes I, I like to to watch they are beautiful see this is a phase scope where I see if it's everything in phase before going to vinyl. And this is not a professional really, but I think it's very beautiful. So I have here. <laughs> nice. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much. 
just one last question. Just uh, give me a short answer to what does synth DIY mean to you? Well, for me, means uh, the possibility to have all my dream synthesizers uh, done and by me and for me, for my music. So I began to do it because uh, I, I had, I used to have a big collection of analog synthesizer, but I didn't have the modular because of pricing, because nobody in Brazil had, and because it was no knowledge about this in here. So I began this to build my DIY modular. And after that, I discovered that this could be used just not just for synths but for audio equipment for my kids toys for my lathe and for fixing a lamp at home so it, it's it's about uh, solving things and and in lots of times learning and discovering things that you didn't think existed Excellent. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's go back to the other room and I'll take some shots of the synth again. Thank you.